So the topic of reverse diet cardio has been coming up a lot lately. I'm getting a lot of questions about how much can I do? Can I do it at all? What is the right or wrong way to do things? And the big thing I want to stress before I get into anything is I'm going to give you some recommendations, but just know there's no hard, steadfast rules or right? you can do whatever you want. There's just pros and cons to everything you do. So I want to make sure you understand these so you can make the right decision that's based on you and your personal goals. Now, the biggest question you need to answer right up front to know how you want to handle things is are you doing a reverse diet because you're trying to get your metabolism back into a better place with the intention of going into a cut again down the road? Or are you just trying to get out of a cutting phase and trying to get into more of a lifestyle where you're trying to roughly maintain or perhaps some sort of balance in between? So the big thing is if you're trying to cut again down the road, then you do want to minimize how much cardio you're doing during the reverse because whatever you do then is what your body is going to be adapting to when it's time to start your cut and when you do cut you want to be able to do it on as many calories as possible as well as as little cardio as possible so when you hit plateaus you have room to make adjustments to get the process working again so it's all about your baseline going in so if you do five hours of cardio a week every single week throughout your entire reverse and now you're starting to cut well to use cardio to add more calorie expenditure to help with the cutting process now you're gonna have to go above and beyond those five hours and your body adapts to cardio pretty quickly and it just makes makes it really hard to utilize more cardio if you're doing that much. Whereas if you're doing very little cardio, now you have plenty of room to step things up and utilize that as a part of your calorie deficit. And getting your cardio down to about 30 to 60 minutes to me is a pretty good spot for most people if you're looking to cut again down the road. Now, when I say 30 to 60 minutes, that's per week, that's not every single day. And that could be divvied up however you want, whether it's you know 10 minutes, three days a week, or 15 minutes, three or four days a week. And if you really like cardio and want to do more then I would go no more than about two hours or so and I think it's also important to ask yourself do you really like cardio that much or you want to do more cardio because you're terrified of gaining more weight during your reverse and that's just a slippery slope and you want to make sure you're remembering that the reverse diet is to set yourself up for the success and it's not so much about what happens during it of course you don't want to just let things go completely but you also can't be terrified of gaining weight either now in my opinion what you don't want to do is get down to no cardio at all I think it's important if for no other reason just the general health benefits that come from it for your heart for your lungs it also helps with things like work capacity in the gym for your training it helps with getting your calories up a little bit more and trust me I've been the guy who's done no cardio and it's just like I would get so winded from just basic things like even just talking on the phone for a long time I'd find myself catching my breath like okay maybe I should do more than zero minutes of cardio and of course an active healthy lifestyle is important no matter what phase we're in but it is a balancing act especially if if you're looking to lose more fat down the road. Now, if you're not looking to cut down the road and you're just kind of looking to maybe roughly maintain or just live a healthy, active lifestyle, then you don't necessarily have to bring it down so much or even at all, just depending on what you want to do and what you enjoy. So if you like to do a lot of cardio and that's how you tend to stay more active, then great. However much you want to do is what you should kind of work it towards. Let's say what you want to do moving forward is do maybe around like three or four hours of cardio for the week or maybe two or three hours for the week. Well, now you can taper your cardio down until you get to around that point and then just kind of do somewhere in that range and I think a range is a good spot when you're just kind of trying to roughly maintain versus exact numbers all the time and this helps create some of that flexibility and now you're staying active and healthy but it's still good to taper it down instead of going right from a lot to almost none remember your body's now adapted to the higher amounts of cardio so much like with calories if you were to just go from very little to a lot right away your body wouldn't be able to keep up very well and you're going to gain more body fat quickly the same can happen if you reduce your activity too fast going from a lot to very little right away so you taper it down if you're doing a lot maybe you can remove 20 to 30 minutes a week or so if you're not doing a whole lot maybe you only reduce by around maybe 10 or so there's no right or wrong answers and much like with increasing calories the slower you would reduce your cardio the less likely you are to gain but the longer it's going to take to get through that process so that balance is kind of up to you and also consider too if you care more about getting activity down and having more time or getting calories up quicker and enjoying more food you can 
can take one faster or slower or do a kind of like a moderation of both, whatever is most preferable to you. Now, a different consideration can be if you're someone who's more of a performance athlete, maybe you're someone who just really enjoys running in terms of like doing marathons or half marathons or 5Ks or whatever it may be, if that's something you really like, then obviously you're gonna have to keep that cardio higher to be able to perform for those. And it's also something you need to consider for future cutting phases as well, because if you're doing a lot of cardio for things like half marathons, do you wanna use that cardio for fat loss specifically, or do you want to use it to perform and get the best times you can? Try to do both simultaneously, probably not going to work very well because you're either going into a deficit and have less energy supply and therefore less energy, or you have higher calories, more energy and perform better, but trying to get to the best of both worlds, well, I'm sure it's worked okay for some people, in general, that just doesn't work well. So it's a bit of a catch-22, it really is. And again, you have to determine what you want and there's no right or wrong answer. But if you're someone who is a professional athlete in some sort of sport or whatever else, and you need the endurance and to be able to keep up with your sport, well then you're probably just gonna have to keep that cardio high and just make sure you're fueling yourself well with food and calories so that you can perform your best. At that point, you don't really have much of a choice. Also, one other question that comes up, and it's a good question, is what about walking versus more forms of traditional cardio? And I do like to separate them. That doesn't mean that walking doesn't count as cardio. If you You've watched many of my videos you know I recommend it all the time I think it's one of the best things you can do for fat loss however I like to separate the two in terms of like even incline walking on a treadmill or stationary bike or elliptical or whatever else you prefer to do versus regular walking on a flat surface. What I prefer to do is track steps and then track more traditional forms of cardio separately. And this can also help too because if you're increasing your cardio down the road, you're naturally gonna increase steps. And what can happen is you take less steps throughout the day because of this and you end up kind of trading calories burned. So in my opinion, it's good to separate those two. And much like with more traditional forms of cardio, your body will adapt to however many steps you get too. So if you're doing a lot of walking and you want to use more walking when it's time to cut again down the road, well, do you want your baseline to be 10,000 steps or maybe like 5,000 steps or however many steps is reasonable to you, keeping in mind that reasonable is very different for each person. And also strength training. You may be wondering, well, if you reduce your cardio, should you then reduce all forms of exercise, including strength training? And the answer is no. Your strength training should stay relatively the same, whether you're cutting, building, maintaining. You wanna utilize strength training to build the lean body mass and help with metabolism during your building phases. And then you use it to maintain your lean body mass in cutting phases. And your body doesn't quite adapt so easily like it does with cardio. So if you're just looking to maintain, sure, you can back off a little bit it's much easier to maintain muscle than it is to build muscle, but you still want to keep up with your strength training in general. And you definitely don't need to reduce it to set yourself up for a cut. If anything, doing more strength training within reason, of course, is only going to help when it comes time to cut. Remember, it's not what you do when you cut that mostly dictates the results you're going to get from it. Obviously it matters, but what you do when you're not cutting is going to make the biggest difference in terms of how that's going to go for you. So don't skimp out on that. And remember that it's super important to stay on top of things, even when you're not seeing that physical result. Now, the last question you may have, and this is a common one is maybe you're overweight right now. And if you are, well, should I go into a reverse diet at this point, since I'm already in kind of an unhealthy position, does it really make sense to possibly make things worse? And of course it depends, but to answer that question, I've already covered this in a different video that you can check out up top here. Otherwise, I think you'll like this bottom video instead, and I'll see you next time.